Good afternoon. The Committee on General Government Operation, Appropriation, and Housing is now called to order. For the record, today is Monday, July 20th, 2020, and the time now is 2 o'clock. The clock there says 2.03. That's fast, three minutes. I'm not even going to look at that no more. Notice for this budget hearing was disseminated via email to all centers and all main media broadcasting outlets. First public notice was issued on Tuesday, June 30th, and second notice was on July 15th, 2020. The committee will hear and accept testimonies on Bill 282-35 LS, the Fiscal Year 2021 Appropriation Act, as requested by the Governor, relative to the Council on Arts and Humanities, Fiscal Year 2021 Budget Request. I'd like to acknowledge the Oversight Chair of CAHA, Senator Kelly Mars Titano. Um, General rules for the budget hearing, those testifying on behalf of the department or agency will be recognized by myself. And I've already invited the, the, the uh, agency's representative, and they are already seated on the panel. Written te testimony shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide my legislative staff with your written testimony for photocopying. Testimony may be read, and lengthy testimony should be summarized. Testimony shall be confined to the substance. Ladies will, and colleagues, we, we will be discussing the budget 2021 for CAHA. We may ask questions about what's ongoing today, but that's not what we're here for. We're about 2021 budget. Individuals will be allowed to present oral testimony. And when you're done, I'd ask the panel to remain in the room for, for questions and for additional testimony as may be desired by members of the committee. Proper form and decorum shall be practiced by all present in the public hearing room for these proceedings. Individuals who fail to maintain proper form decorum may be restricted from providing oral testimony and or may be asked to leave or be escorted or actually just removed from the room. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone. Please state your name and title for the record. At this time, I ask the panel members from the Council on the Arts and Humanities to rise and for our Sergeant Arms to please swear them in. Thank you, Sergeant Arms. I ask the panel to please uh, make sure that you state your name and title for the record. You may now begin your testimony on bill on your budget 2021. Thank you, Senator. My name is Gillette Tori Leon Guerrero, and I'm the executive director of CAHA. Okay. Can I get some mic? Okay. Um, I have some brief remarks this this afternoon. Um, much of what we know about our culture is through the arts and humanities, artistic traditional practices, folklore, visual vestiges of artwork left behind, decoration on material culture, language, song, dance, chants. We express our culture through these very same things, the arts and humanities. In a democracy, the arts and humanities are the vehicle that provides expression for citizens of all walks of life. That is why, in a dictatorship, the first persecuted are the artists and the scholars. The arts and humanities give voice to victims of social injustice and can bring to light not only the beautiful aspects of our society, but the underbelly as well. This illumination can lead to changes for the good in our society. The healing, arts of the, the healing power of the arts and humanities are well known. The arts are used in a number of therapies. The artist's ability to identify and express those things that make us human has the ability to bring diverse groups of people together, inspire us, and help us relate to others. This can result in providing connections for those who do not have the experience of a close network of family and friends. In many cases, these are those who are on the margins of society. This year, CAHA has funded a variety of projects that impact those in need, including projects for at-risk students, art therapy for the Monomco, art workshops for the Guma San Jose Homeless Shelter, and a wood carving apprenticeship program at the Department of Corrections. Other projects include Art in the Ville, a project to offer workshops for the youth in several disciplines, street art, performance, spoken word, and photography. This year's programs also supported programs that promote traditional practices such as blacksmithing, the visual arts, the performing arts, culinary arts, architecture, poetry, and literature. 
These programs are expected to reach at least approximately 22,844 residents. And yet the cost for these programs comes out to approximately 24 cents per person. During these uncertain times, the arts and humanities play an important role. When this pandemic first reached our shores and we were required to, be, to go into lockdown, what did you turn to? Many turned to arts and humanities, music, literature, films, and video productions. And who is it that will relay our experience of this special time to our descendants? I want to implore you to understand that the arts and humanities are vital to the development of our society. Caja came into being on January 1st, 1983, after being established by Public Law 16122. It ran for 28 years as its own agency, and during the height of its time, grew to include over a dozen staff members. Then in October 2011, Caja was merged into the Department of Chamorro Affairs, and they lost their executive director. For what I understand, it languished during this time. In 2019, Caja was separated from the Department of Chamorro Affairs, and in April of this year, I was appointed acting executive director and was confirmed by this legislature this past Friday. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> um, I have a current staff of three with three hires in progress. I also inherited an office space that is uninhabitable, which requires my staff to work from our homes. We have a bid out for new office space, office and gallery space, and expect to have the bids opened on the 23rd of this month. We're hoping to be in a new home sometime in August. Fingers crossed. Um, coming from the private and the nonprofit community, I'd like to see a CAHA that has a buy-in from a wider segment of the community. I'd also like to be able to increase the amount of funds that the council can raise from outside sources, while also increasing the efficiency of the small staff. I've already started work on some of these changes, which include an increase in our information technology capabilities, development of a crowdfunding platform, and scrutiny of the operational practices of the council. This also includes an investigation into the organizational structure of the council. We will be conducting strategic planning uh, sessions next month that increases the participation of our con constituents. A survey of our artists has been developed and actually launched to elicit to elicit their comments and suggestions for how CAHA can be more responsive to their needs. The current results of this survey show that almost 95% of the respondents would like to see some of the changes we have already planned. That's, that's, for me, that's pretty impressive, 95%. <laughs> um, during the course of my research on the council, I came across Public Law 22-60 that appropriated $200,000 a year for Off-Island Education Training and Cultural Enhancement Fund to be administered by CAHA. Later legislation, Public Law 22-124, set up the, regulations, uh, the rules and regulations for the fund, and Public Law 31-132 identified the source of the funds for the program, the Healthy Futures Fund. The law stipulated that while the governor may transfer funds to supplement the off-island education and training cultural enhancement fund, no portion of the fund, including principal and interest, shall be transferred to any other fund or used or appropriated except as under this article. But according to my program coordinator, Jackie Balbus, who's here with me and has been with the council for decades, CAHA has not seen any funds for this program since 1994. Currently, there are no funds in this account. I guess what I'm trying to get across is that we have big plans for CAHA. The current board and staff are very excited about these changes, and I'm very confident that if we have the resources to accomplish our plans, this will be a win-win situation for everyone. It is true that the FY 2021 budget is higher than this year's budget, but that is primarily due to personnel costs, namely the hire, my hire, uh, the salary of the executive director. The issues that are problematic with the 2021 budget relates to the local overmatch. We have received an additional federal funding for 2021 that now uh, increases our amount from 294000 to 309300 in local matching funds. That's a difference of about 14500 this increase in federal funding is for programs, so it can't be used for any operational um, uh, uses. If the budget is funded at the level requested, we still will have to move funds from the overmatch to the partnership agreement. 
The Overmatch Fund currently funds the salaries and benefits of Jackie and I, as well as some contractual services like our Xerox machine, uh, supplies and materials, and equipment for our new office and gallery space. This budget is bare bones, and any cuts will be felt by the council. I believe that if we are successful in making the changes outlined uh, previously, that the efficiency of the council will increase public confidence in Kaha, and ideally the public will understand the value of the arts and humanities in their lives. So I hope you will sincere, uh, sincerely consider supporting the budget as it is presented today. Thank you. Thank you. I have a few questions. Okay. How much COVID-19 federal assistance will you be receiving for this FY 2020 and extended to 2021? If any, what is the impact? Okay. We have, uh, we have received 160400 in uh, CARES Act funding, mm -hmm. which we will be um, um, granting out to nonprofits and individual artists um, in grants of, uh, I think, 10000 for organizations, organizations. and about 5000 for you're, individuals. You receive CARES money to give away for nonprofits? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, and, and does, does any of that fund extend into 2021? Yeah, yes, the, the funds um, expire in 2022. That's right. Yeah. All right, 2022. Yeah. So a total of 160, 400 K. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And that's there's requires no match. Requires no matching. No match. No match. Okay. Does your department have any outstanding retro employees salary payment as a result of the Competitive Wage Act of 2014? And if so, how many employees and what is the status of these payments? Okay. Public Law 36-35 authorized department to liquidate any such obligation. Do you have any employees that are old? Retro and competitive wage. Um, just uh, Jackie, I think, perhaps. I, I'm not quite sure about that law, but uh, she served as acting director uh, before my hire. and so, so, so that's not the competitive wage act. That's just okay. the acting. Okay, all right. Okay, so, so no. are, are you processing that paper? I mean, did you meet the 90 days? I mean, I'm not too sure exactly. Yes. Yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, okay, working you're working on, on it. it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're please on make that. sure you work with DOA and, and get that settled, okay? Yes, we're, we, we want to accomplish that before the end of this uh, fiscal year. Yeah, sooner, even better. Yes, okay. as soon as possible. I'm <laughs> yes, thank you. We have no AO, so we're sort of learning together here. <laughs> okay, uh, please explain. You have new equipment, 11,400 in FY 2021. One is 12, uh, 12 tracking light system. It's going to cost 2,400. Two computer desk workstation, 4,000. And five office desks and chair. Uh, I don't know if that's chair and the five desks. Uh, 4,000. Um, can you explain that? Uh, is, is that actually to furnish all the employees? I mean, what were they using today? Because you only have one additional staff that you're adding to your budget. So yeah. what are they using? What are yeah. the six employees using today? Okay. Uh, Senator, I'm Jackie Balbus, Program Coordinator for at CAHA. And to answer your question, the furniture uh, and workstations that we're using right now, they belong to the Department of Tomorrow Affairs. It does, it's not Kaha property. So uh, we are utilizing uh, some of their space at the Angela Flores building. So you unborrowed space and borrowed furniture. That's correct. And once, when you move to your, your new office, then you just need something to use. Yes. All right. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. It's got a 12 tracking light system. What is that all about? Um, that's um, <laughs> lights for the gallery. For the because, gallery. Yes, because in our former location, uh, we only had the ceiling lights, which really um, doesn't do justice to the artwork that's being displayed. So we'd like to get uh, track lighting that you can focus directly on the artwork that's going right, to be showcased. Good. Mm -hmm. Better lighting, yes. they, can, they can see the beauty of it. The Tourist Attraction Fund may not meet its revenue due to COVID. Yeah. Does the department, does the agency have an alternative plan to recover revenue shortfall? You know, you have a request of... Um, Based on what the OFB, the analysis done, is that originally in FY 2019, you received 157,000. Uh, in 2020, you received 388. Okay. Now you're asking for 499. That's an increase of 110. Mm -hmm. If TAF, Tourist Attraction Fund, 
which you know mm -hmm. there is no tourists coming in, mm -hmm. is impacting all over the Gulf of Guam. Mm -hmm. If none of the funding comes in, what is your alternative plan? Or let's say it's reduced by 50%. What is your alternative plan? Okay. You're like, oh God. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I don't blame you, I yeah, understand. Yeah. Yeah. But I just I want mean, to make if, it very realistic to you that if no TAF, if minimum amount, if we need to remember, okay, that TAF been trying to get like something like $40 million a year. You guys don't even ask for a million. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But if it's all reduced and it's prorated across everyone that's funded through TAF, yeah. what is your alternative course of action? Do you have one? And you need to plan one, please. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have, uh, I have plans for trying to raise money outside of, of the government and with grants. Um, I mean, failing that, I mean, there is one uh, position that um, if we had to, we, would, we could not uh, fill. Not fill to make sure that at least you continue yeah, to move, right? Yeah. If, if we had it's to, not but your I don't position. really want to. <laughs> it's not your position, it's something else, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, else. I just want to make sure because we just confirmed you. <laughs> Hey, to hear you say, yeah, we can lead one and that's me, and no. Uh, there's a reason why we went to the confirmation. I just wanted to make sure, ma'am, is that yeah. we all understand, and the people who are that's watching this hearing mm -hmm. understand that we're not going to tell you today we support your budget, because generally we do, yeah. and we understand the, the mission of CAW. I mean, you can go to my office and you see, I got all, yeah. most of your property there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But I just wanted to make sure that it's, it's up front. Yeah. That if TAP don't come in, other yeah. than your, you know, your partnership agreement, which is your federal funds, yeah. I mean, because you increased from, uh, you have here in FY 2021, 294, you already identified, you're at 303, right? Yeah, on your, yeah. So that, you know, that increased yeah. about, what, six, seven, eight thousand. Mm -hmm. That's great to know. Mm -hmm. But I'm just concerned is that if TAF doesn't pull through, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. starting October, you're, you, you need to at least plan on that. If we don't get at least, gosh, I would say 50% of what, what you requested for, or at least be status quo from 2020, I know you're going to be hurting. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. I know that uh, all your efforts to, mm -hmm. to outsource, to fundraisers or whatever, you, you, you got, you're in trouble. Yeah. And I don't, you know, you... You might want to reach over to the governor and says, Governor, help us out. Mm -hmm. You need to survive. Yeah. Yeah. I do support CAW. Yeah. There's no doubt in that, yeah. okay? And I'm not going to throw you a blank check that says, here, you got money. Mm -hmm. This is not going to happen. Yeah. None of the agencies that have come here and they all think they're going to get their funding, they're going to get it, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And that's the honest truth. Right now, it's not looking good at all for Gulf Guam. Mm -hmm. For 2021. Yeah. I'm just hoping you survive by the end of the year. <laughs> And at least you can get certain things done. Mm -hmm. And that's why I asked the question about, you got CARES money. Yeah. There's certain things that CARES, CARES is not there to supplant, mm -hmm. but they can supplement your shortfall, correct? It, uh, y yes. I mean, the, uh, the flexibility is there. a portion of it, a small... Uh, uh, under, understood. And that's yeah. why I question, eh? I'm not against the nonprofit, mm -hmm. but... Most of the nonprofits are going to be asking us, can you fund us? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to say today, right now, we don't have the funds mm -hmm. to fund you. So mm -hmm. as you, and I'm happy you're able to find funding to reach out and help them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right now, I can't even comment on that one. I, I'd actually say, sorry, uh, mm -hmm. wait and see what happens. Okay, so I just okay. wanted to let you, let you ladies know that. Um, Senator Kelly, the oversight of CA. Do you have any questions, ma'am? And then Senator Tello. I'd like to recognize that Senator Tello did join us today. She's here. Okay. Senator Kelly. Situs Maasi, Mr. Chair, and Situs Maasi to both of you for being here. Um, I know that you've been in place just a short time. Uh, director, I can now say director and not acting director, <laughs> Director Gillette. And you have such a fine person with you, uh, Jackie, who's been with Kaha for 30 years, who is just such a strong backbone part of the, the agency. So I'm, I'm glad that you're both here today. And 
I'll, I'll start by going over some of the things that the chair has covered, just to give you a little bit of time perhaps to discuss them a little bit further. So with that CARES Act funding, and I'm glad that that funding came through. I did notice that with some of the federal assistance, they have reached out to because they understand. They understand the importance of um, nonprofits. They understand the importance of the arts and humanities. We're going through a lot of stress these days. And there are real roles that agencies like yours uh, and nonprofits play in keeping a community healthy and whole. Mm -hmm. So with one of them that was mentioned with that $160,400 of the CARES Act funding, I believe, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there was a recent flyer that you sent out. And so it wasn't just art for art's sake, which we can all appreciate, but it seemed like in this flyer, it was specifically about art that helps the community solve problems, helps the community deal with this COVID-19, helps the community in various ways. And so uh, if I'm correct, if, if that's tied to the CARES Act funding, but maybe even if not, if you could describe a little bit for us so that we can see CAHA as more of, uh, more than creating beautiful things, which we all appreciate, but actually helping us address some of our social problems and tackle some of the issues that are going on. So if, if you could explain that, that latest grant flyer that you sent out in the program a bit oh, okay. and its goals. Yeah. Yes, that, well, that, um, that's our regular grant program. That was the call for, for proposals. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to give um, our, the artists, well, our, our grantees, I guess you'd call them, uh, an opportunity to investigate um, uh, these issues, the issues of social justice, as well as, as how they're going to deal with, um, uh, how they're dealing with, Kaha, with, um, Kaha, with the, the COVID situation. Um, as I said in my, my testimony, many times uh, the people that bring to light social injustice for the general public are the artists and the scholars and the, the writers and the filmmakers. And so we wanted to give um, an opportunity for them to, to investigate this. I don't know, have we gotten any grants? No, not yeah, our grant, our grant um, we won't know much about what they have, what they have done yet until uh, our grant deadline is the end of this month. So I'll be able to tell you more about um, how they perceived that, but um, I'm hoping that we're going to get some good things. I did get some response from some of the artists, and especially, they were especially interested in the um, social justice uh, uh, grant line. So um, I guess the value, the, well, the value of the artist is their, is their creativity and how they envision things. And so I think that um, many times when they present um, their perspective, they find uh, an audience among the, the general residents. So it's, um, I just think that it was very appropriate at this time. So just Masi for explaining some of that. And again, you know, it helps us think about the budget so that we realize uh, the value that you bring and how you can be helping us solve this situation or tackle some of the issues of the situation. And it can help us look at the budget a little harder. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. And um, I can talk with the chair perhaps later about, you know, what could we do to go to go about recategorizing some of the way that we look at government and calling you perhaps community morale and empowerment, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, something that helps us understand and yeah. therefore be able to support in the budget, uh, even in really tough times like mm -hmm. we're going through yeah. um, the request. Can you explain to me a little bit, so I know that there are federal funds that come in every year, mm -hmm. and is, is any of this jeopardized if the budget gets cut too drastically? Like, are we going to lose being able to leverage those federal funds coming in if we don't find you a matching grant or you're not able to um, have mm. that kind of support from the government? 
Um, yeah, can you yeah. explain that situation to us a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, the federal grant does require a dollar for dollar match. So if we do not receive that money, then we do not receive that grant. Basically, that, it, that's the bottom line. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, and I think that's important for us to think about. We want to leverage as much from the federal government as possible. And if we can leverage it towards also helping our community mm -hmm. tackle these issues, yeah. it, to me it seems like it's a win-win. And I know uh, the chair had asked you to look for other funding sources, mm -hmm. and I think that there are potentials here. Mm -hmm. If you could look at the, um, now I don't know all the rules, but you know, you would have the time to look at the, the rules uh, and regulations. Mm -hmm. But like the um, recycling, the revolving recycling fund, mm -hmm. you know, is there a way that artists can be creating yeah, sculptures yeah, or, right. or artwork like we've mm -hmm. talked about, mm -hmm. like trash receptacles and mm -hmm. things like this that encourage and, and solve the problem, at least some of it, for the littering and illegal dumping by also using some of our landfill items and mm -hmm. accessing yeah. perhaps monies that are available mm -hmm. elsewhere. Yeah. Um, so I encourage you to look for partnerships like that with the Island Beautification Task Force, with the um, re revolving recycling fund. I, I keep on feeling like I'm getting that order wrong, but. Mm -hmm. that recycling fund, um, okay. to see if there are programs that do have money. Uh, mm -hmm. You did mention the Healthy Futures Fund. Mm -hmm. So uh, programs that do have money that can be partnered with you to help alleviate some of the shortfalls that are going to yeah. be coming TAF's way. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. um, I think there's a lot of potential there, and I'll ask you a question. Well, let's just skip to it. Um, mm -hmm. The the chair had to ask this a little bit. So Kaha became a 501c3 nonprofit before it was it became an agency, actually. Yeah. And so agencies such as Kaha and PBS have this nonprofit status and eligibility to seek federally funded grant opportunities. Mm -hmm. Are there opportunities that you've been able to identify thus far? Um, mm -hmm. I, I think you have a fairly strong background in federal funding. Yeah. So do you think you'll be successful in that this upcoming year? Yeah. Um, well, first, let me, let me explain that um, the precursor of CAHA had the 501c3 uh, um, status. And I'm still doing research into whether or not it actually had it, uh, CAHA had it. It was the Insular Arts Council that had it. So um, I, I spoke with somebody that was uh, actually working, that they, they ended up working for the Insular Arts Council. CAHA was listed as a nonprofit with the Department of Revenue and Taxation in the early 90s, and um, it lost its nonprofit status because it didn't submit reports to them for five years. But I haven't been able to find anything else at uh, Department of Revenue and Taxation. So the, the what I'm trying to find out is, can we um, become uh, a 501c3? Uh, and, and I know that there is a relationship, uh, a close relationship with the government that you can have like a 501c3. It's similar to um, the Guam Preservation Trust. They're able to um, apply for grants, uh, grants and, and raise money. I don't know if they do, but... Um, they can do that. So that's what I'm trying to figure out if we can, we're able to do that and what are the, um, you know, the rules and regulations, uh, how it would apply. And um, if we can incorporate, I think that might be one way to do, to do it. But I just, we don't have a, we're, we have a, a nominee who's an attorney to become on the board, but um, we don't, I don't have any legal um, support at this point in time. So uh, basically, it's, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure that out and to, to find the uh, appropriate um, status for CAHA so that it can still maintain a close relationship, you know, it's with the, the government of Guam and not, be, not necessarily be a, a standalone um, nonprofit. Does that make sense? I mean, do I? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. this is a very short comment because I, I used to work up there, Revenue and Tax. I handle every, pretty much all the nonprofit yeah. for the department back then. You can apply for 501c3. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, there's not a problem yeah. there. You can apply for any of the nonprofit status. And you're right, after so many years, mm -hmm. when, the, when the agency at the time or the nonprofit didn't, didn't submit their report, mm -hmm. which is basically a simple treasurer's report, yeah. one document, no signature required, yeah. Yeah. they would have been okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but uh, a lot of nonprofits do this. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can apply, and um, you meet with the business license and the GRT section, and they'll mm -hmm. give you the form. 1023, they'll give you all the documents. You can actually pull it up. As a matter of fact, if you want, uh, Madam Director, mm -hmm. you can pull it up under the IRS and you can apply for that. Okay. You don't need to wait for revenue. You can do this. Mm -hmm. There have been nonprofits in Guam that went in and applied because of the process is long. Mm -hmm. It's very long at the Department of Tax. And the reason why is because there are tens, if not hundreds, of groups on Guam that are applying for nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And it's just as easy, you can type it in on the, on the web page of the IRS, apply for your 501c3, you can get your, your EIN, your employer's identification number, on the IRS, because that's the only place you're going to be able to get it. Yeah, exactly. And you can upload, and yes, if you get it, uh, I know your, your, your staff here is going to say yes, and you can apply for all kinds of grants mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the federal government. But I just yeah. wanted to comment on that one, cause, only because I'm very familiar with the okay. yeah, 501c3. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. Senator Kelly. Sujus Maasi, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair. And again, you know, I don't know what all the possibilities are, but I, I know you have good background in this. And so mm -hmm. while you're working through that process, I've, I've heard that you can um, already be applying for things if, if they understand you're on the waiting list and you're going through the process. But we also do have DCA, I think the Guam Public Library mm -hmm. System and um, Guam Preservation Trust, you know, we do have these other nonprofits that you could perhaps partner with mm -hmm. um, as possibilities. So I just, um, I encourage you to be as creative as possible mm -hmm. because the more, the more that you are, uh, the better off you're mm -hmm. going to be helping yourself mm -hmm. when we start sorting through what those TAF shortfalls are going okay. to be. Mm -hmm. So with this also, um, you do have two vacant positions consisting mm -hmm. of a stage technician who retired mm -hmm. and a PC1 mm -hmm. that has um, sought another or has been, um, has accepted a, another position uh, elsewhere. So with that, um, just to get a full picture as well, is there, is there anybody expecting to retire in this year that you're aware of? Um, mm -hmm. Okay. No, no one, no. And, and so you did mention being uh, short the administrative uh, officer. Is that recruitment in process? Yeah. Yes, she starts on uh, the 3rd of August. Okay. So we've hired her, and then the PC1, we're interviewing on Friday, conducting interviews on Friday. Okay, very good. <clears throat> um, let's see. And this one is uh, with, there is a federal cash match, as we've talked about. Mm -hmm. So CAHA is currently requesting a $294,800 federal cash match for fiscal year 2021. So Guam is allowed by federal law to ask for a $200,000 waiver from the National Endowment for the Arts uh, to my understanding, but uh, there may okay. be particulars as to why it does or does not mm -hmm. qualify. The application of such a waiver would reduce your cash match, of course, uh, greatly. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard of this cash match, um, that there is this $200,000 waiver? Um, or do you know of any time in the past where people have requested that? Maybe Jackie would know mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've only heard of it, but I, I, I didn't know which way it went, <laughs> you know. I didn't know if it was uh, the federal or the, or the local. I, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know that much about that particular thing. But we did, uh, but like I said earlier, we did receive more than the 294,000 this year for, uh, in federal funds, 309 um, that is um, required that requires a match. But in, in addition to that, we've also received the other, um, the, the CARES Act funding, and then we've also received another, what was it, 10,000 for the? Actually, oh. sorting pieces. 
Oh, that's really inclusive. Okay, all right, sorry. Oh, that's, okay. that's different. This year. Oh, that's this year. Okay, sorry. In, yeah, <laughs> Confused. so this year, so, last year. <laughs> yeah, I would encourage you to continue working with my office to okay. see if that waiver does apply. I mean, if mm -hmm. it does apply, that's fantastic yeah. news for everybody. Um, if not, then it was yeah. worth trying. But also with uh, the federal monies coming in, um, we know that there are different things that are still going through Congress and so forth. Have you heard of the possibility? Is there the possibility of more federal funding to your knowledge? Um, I haven't heard of it, but I think that I think perhaps the, the um, NASA, the uh, National Association Assembly of State Arts Agencies, uh, the nonprofit that services all of us, might be working on trying to to get more for the councils. I know. A lot of the um, states are receiving um, extra funding from their states, so that's kind of what they're pushing now is, is for the state governments to, to give more money to their, their arts agencies, but that's not, a, yeah, that's not possible here. So, um, let me see. So I think um, this is largely what I wanted to cover uh, for this time, but I, I asked that I might be able to ask a couple of follow-up questions. So do as Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Tello, you have any questions, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And Hoffaday ladies, thank you for being here. Uh, Gillette, it's always a pleasure to see you. Nice. You know, it's, and, and of course, uh, uh, Jacqueline, right? Jacqueline? Mm -hmm. what, what is your short? They call you something. Just Jackie, Jackie. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what like Jacqueline. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, a wealth of knowledge, Jackie. You've been there quite a bit, quite a long time through trials and tribulations. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you're, you're going to be very helpful for the, the new director uh, moving forward. But you know, it's unfortunate. And I'm here today because, you know, I, I, I've been an advocate, a true advocate for the arts. Mm -hmm have always been, and um, it's unfortunate that when dire times like these happen, um, you know, it always seems the arts are the first ones to be cut, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. um, but that being said, you know, Gillette, I have confidence in you because this is a time now for you to be creative <laughs> and uh, put, put on some different, um, you know, hats and, mm -hmm. and definitely different ideas and thinking outside of the box. Mm -hmm with regards to finding ways to, to keep your mission statement mm -hmm. and your vision for Kaha, you know, it's important. Yeah. You know, um, the, of course, the TAF is the biggest concern. Yes. You know, we all have to be concerned about that with regards to, especially when I'm looking at this, and in uh, 2019, you actually received some general fund monies, mm -hmm. but yeah. in 2020, it was all not, gen you received no general yeah. fund money. Mm -hmm. Again, in 2021, uh, there is no request mm -hmm. for general fund money, mm -hmm. right, in, with respect to that. Mm -hmm. um, now you're all, you're almost relying strictly on TAF, which is yeah. th the biggest issue here. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've noticed the, uh, the partnership agreement. It's a yeah. federal fund mm -hmm. under partnership agreement. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of explain to me, uh, I'm sorry if it was already asked, but can you kind of explain to me this $294 and uh, $800, what partnership agreement is for federal funds? Is it a grant that's given yes, to you? Yes, yes, that's okay. the, CAHA is the state arts agency, and so we have a, a partnership with the en National Endowment for the Arts. Oh, okay. So I remember. they give us, um, you know, a set amount, I don't know how long, since the beginning? I think it's been since... 1965, yeah. we've been getting a grant from There's no NEA. matching fund on this one? Gillette? It's matching. Okay, yeah, it is. And you said 50. It's one to one. One to one. match, yeah. And, and um, you've been able to use TAF funding to match that? Yes, yes. So yes. that's where it just you has to be, the money. It just has to be money that the government, the government right. share. So okay. it could be TAF, it could be general fund, it could be... And, last, and yeah. this year, you, you, of course, used TAF money. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm, Speaking yeah. of TAF, are you getting all your appropriations? Are you getting, are you getting your, lot, I'm sorry, your allotments, are they coming in on time? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yes, I think so, yeah. So your allotments yeah. are coming yeah. in on time. I'm, yeah. No issue there. Um, you talked about the CARES Act earlier, mm -hmm. 
And if I'm not mistaken, I mean, I keep hearing that the, did this money come from the governor's 117 million? No. Okay, so this is totally different. This is in addition okay. to that, yeah. This and is directly from the National Endowment for okay. the Arts. Yeah. And that's why you're able to spend it in 2022. When yes. the CARES Act money is here, we have to spend it by the end of this year, December. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're able to do it. Okay, I just wanted to zero in on that mm -hmm. one. Um, also, you know, Jill, I, I don't see anything here, but, but according to, um, I think it was, I can't remember the chapter, Let's see if I can find the chapter. Um, it's uh, Title I GCA, Section 852, C1 requires 1% of the total construction revenue. Oh, okay. okay, this fund is supposed to be given to Kaha, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Can, you, can you kind of explain to me? Up mm -hmm. to date, 2021, within the FY 2021, how much money have you received based on this mm -hmm. law that required either, either the um, mm -hmm. arts being placed in these new constructed areas? I know that the hotel that was just recently opened, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that should generate some revenue yes. there. So mm -hmm. can you tell me what is in your balance for this particular account, the 1% that I'm talking about, okay. please. Okay, the 1% for the arts has um, some very um, strict uh, requirements. It can only be used for artwork at this point. We're hoping to change, to modify that. Um, hold on, I did get the balance of the account. We do have, um, I gotta hold on. I have to find it. It's, no it's about nine hundred. No problem. It's about nine hundred thousand is in that account right now. Okay, so you have about nine hundred in your yes. account currently. Yes, so a little it, bit it, more, but okay. it's. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, um, w some of the restrictions that you were talking about earlier, yes. like no travel. No, well, the restrictions are. It only can be used for for purchase of artwork. As I understand it, so it's very restrictive. It, it would be. It, it would be very helpful if we could use some of those funds. You know, I, I think so too, Jeanette. You know, I've always been in uh, with this particular fund that was generated. Yeah. It, I think there should yeah. be some restrictions on it with regards to ensure that a certain percentage of this money does stay with the artist, you know. But then your agency is running right now on no general fund yes. yeah. at all. Yeah. Right. You are strictly yeah. on TAF, and we mm -hmm. all see what's happening with TAF. One thing's for sure that I'm hoping the oversight chair realizes that that one-to-one -one money, I mean the 50-50 mm -hmm. uh, matching, uh, matching fund is, is in place and stays in place. We've, mm -hmm. we've got to find some way to squeeze that turnip, you know, and, yeah. and get some money out of that. And the other one I think is the, the restrictions that you have on this funding, because like you said, your balance is almost a million dollars in uh -huh. that account. And your budget is, if you add up, um, well, just take away the federal funds, um, you're, you're looking at uh, only 499. Mm -hmm. Th that'll be helpful. I mean, in these austere measure measures right happening, the COVID, the pandemic right. that we're in, we have to make adjustments. Right. And if we can find a way, Mr. Chair, uh, to help Kaha out, not to always be the child that's put, set aside so that everybody else progresses, mm -hmm. um, this is, this is what we can maybe do, you know, to help that out, maybe, maybe put in the budget bill yeah. or something like that can help, you know, working closely mm -hmm. with your oversight chair as well, you know, okay. to ensure that the artists do get their money. So that's one possibility, Gillette, and, okay. I, and I hope you can work with the oversight yes. chair with that and come up with a, a solution. Um, have you received any money whatsoever for, uh, not, not what you've raised on fundraising, but have you received any money from, uh, uh, for the fest pack, um, we received uh, um, from the NEA. We received travel funds of ten thousand dollars, which d didn't require a match. That's a separate a separate amount from this. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So you, but, you, yeah. ten ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars for a fest pack only. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We need to check with NEA if we can because since uh, fest pack okay. was canceled. Right, exactly. You know, I was, I was going to write and ask, can we use that funds in, an, you know, those funds uh, right. in a different way or if we have uh, to return I'm, it? I don't know. Right, and, and I'm curious. I mean, it's, it's my concern is to ensure that you guys are not 
pushed aside, mm -hmm. that your mission and your vision uh, for your artists mm -hmm. out there stay mm -hmm. intact as much yeah. as we can. So um, if it means trying to utilize some funding now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so supportive of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. other than that, uh, I, I just wanted to verify too, you said earlier there are three employees. Uh, is that including yourself, Gillette? So it's total no. of four? Uh, th there's, oh, yeah, actually, one, two, four, there's four, sorry. Four yeah. total. Counting me. Yeah. Counting yeah. you yeah. is four, yeah. correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Counting you is four. And then, yes. so and, who, and who is, okay, Mark Duane is still there? Mark Duane, yes, yes. Angie Tidegui? Yes. And then who's Sherry Barcinas? Okay, she's, she's uh, she moved on to a, uh, the oh, department. Oh, she's the one that left. Yeah. Oh, but okay. we have her replacement uh, who will start on the 3rd of August. Oh, you did find yes, a replacement? Yes, we found before. her a replacement. And okay. she can't start too soon. <laughs> so then you'll have five. Yes, then we'll have and five. And then there'll be five. Then there'll be five. <laughs> and then we also have, we have, are interviewing the PC1 position on Friday. Oh, that's so, excellent. Yeah, okay. Because we lost. So that will be six. So that's. That's this half is. of the amount when Kaha was at its <laughs> zenith. Yep. Um, and then this one here. So that means that's one, two, three, three so other seven. vacancies that, that are still, you know, I yes. mean, six is good. You yeah. know, yeah. We, we, we've got to do what we can and, yeah. and cut what we can. So um, that being said, that means that's funding that you're going to need for their salaries. And my last yeah. question, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, again for the opportunity. But my last question is how much of, of your agency is... Uh, on salaries alone. Salaries alone. I don't know if any. If, oh, oh, wait, I don't. Know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if I know the answer to that question. Salary. Does that mean yes, just salaries, salaries alone. There's only here. three of you there right now, yeah. or four of you there right now. Yeah. How much is in in salaries total? Oh, the total of the salaries. Yes. Oh, total. I'm sorry. No worries. No worries. Okay. Obviously. <laughs> Let me see. I have to look through this because the salaries are separated on in this sure. budget to um, to those funded through the um, um, partnership agreement, which is 50/50. So 50% of the salaries is local and 50 is is um, federal. Uh -huh. And then we have the positions, which are Jackie and I, which are totally local funds. Lo that makes sense. Um, you mean TAF funds? TAF. I mean TAF. Okay. Yeah. TAF, TAF funds. So um, TAF funding, yeah. And um, I think Jackie has that number. I think you'll find that in your, so on your digest. Yeah, yeah it's 303,805. 803, okay. That, oh, that doesn't include Jackie and I. That doesn't include no. Jackie? And then we're okay. in a separate, yeah, that's why this is so confusing to me because I have to look at another page. You see, and Jackie and I. But it's, but it's I'm fact, looking at 300, 381,557. Does that sound about right, Jackie? Uh, just for the, the other employees? Just for the four of yeah. you? Because I believe um, the director and I is roughly uh, 160,000 or 170,000 for the two of us. 160,000 and 170? No, 170,000. 7,000 and 160,000. About, yeah. About. For the, just for the two of you alone. Yes. And then um, the remaining, so yeah. you're looking Here. Okay, wait, here's over 300. Yeah. You, you'll find it on your, on your digest yeah. that just for Jackie and the directors, $170,876. Yeah. And on the uh, partnership agreement, it totals 295,906. Mr. Chair, I think I, I just heard Jackie say 107 and 160. No, for Gillette and I, it's 170,000. Oh, total. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, so about 200. Okay, um, I'll look, and, and this does not include that uh, additional person you're hoping to bring on in August 5th. Right. Um, this it one. does. It's budgeted. It does. No, the first figure we gave. So, Mr. Oh, Chair, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chair, I. Yes. I, yes. I, I, the question was, uh, so this, this amount does not include the additional person they're hoping to bring on on August 5th? They have two additional uh, recruitment in oh, progress yes, right now. Yes, it's in progress. Oh, no, you have a state maintenance uh, 
technician and a program coordinator one. So it does complete it then? Yeah. It's still oh. 295,000 or is it a little bit more? Yeah. Hold on. It'll come up you know, just for the sake of yeah. time, um, sure. if you guys can just look at that, and I'll, I'll get with uh, the oversight chair to find out what that total is. But I'd yeah. like it incorporated with the two uh, potentials. Mm -hmm. What you what you have right now, which is the four individuals, right. and then the oh. two individuals later. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so you just on the salaries alone. Salaries. Okay. 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 Salaries for yeah, and all the other staff. And yes. then for the other and the other two. Right. Okay. You'll, you'll basically have five under your partnership agreement mm -hmm. and two under the right. TAF. Right, right, yeah. Okay, and that will give you your seven. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, just all your uh, lodging and everything that's, that you have. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's more to that in the salaries where I'm getting at, and we, we can hash it out on the floor, but... Okay. Um, the other one is the uh, the facilities. Anything on your facilities? That's all taken care of through uh, Chamorro Affairs, right? I mean, they handle all your your rental and everything that's there. Or do you guys do that on your own? The, uh, the right funding. now, yeah, currently, right now, yes. But we're hoping to have our own building, right? Place <laughs> next month. I'm really, it's really difficult because we're not even in our offices right now because of uh, a mold. Issue, so we're still working at home, and okay. we just today started to do some work at the library, a room in the library. So we're nomads. You're nomads right now. <laughs> we're nomads right now. Well, I tell you, which that is really frustrating. <laughs> if if you can also um, if you can also look at that one percent on the building, this new hotel yes. that just came up with Gia. Yeah. We, um, I think the budget, I mean, your budget, I'm sorry, the balance to that $900,000 mm -hmm. that's in that account is yeah. actually going to grow. Yes, yes. It's, we've actually received the first installment from them already, which okay, was 200000 And okay. then there's the payment schedule every quarter. Okay. They'll pay us uh, 200000 but, but like I said, the, currently the way that the legislation is written is that those monies can only be used to purchase art. Right. And um, it would really be beneficial be for Kaha to be able to use some of that money for operations. I think so, too. I think yeah. we can do a nice balance between the yes. two and yeah. not just, you know. Okay. Well, okay. thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chair, for the opportunity. Thank, thank you. you, Gillette. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Senator Kelly has one more question okay. for you. No problem. Sajus <laughs> Mahasi, Mr. Chair. And um, I appreciate it's... It's good to have this discussion about looking for funding, uh, being creative. I mean, our government partners are always going to be here. Our federal partners are always going to be here. Our business community as partners are always going to be here. And I know that uh, you're well versed in this coming from uh, a nonprofit world um, and so forth. And so uh, we, will, we really want to do what we can uh, in the government to provide the support that's needed to leverage those federal funds. But we, we do know that uh, there are these partnerships that can serve for the long term. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a really exciting possibility um, and can take us in some really good directions for our community mm -hmm. and for the agency itself. And I just wanted to clarify, I know that you weren't here, uh, Director, when we went through this, but one of the things was in the Percent for the Arts money um, that there was always the intention, as I understand it, in looking in that language, that uh, looking at arts to also include the term that they used in some places was uh, native arts. And so what we did more recently was we just um, clarified that so that it can include the performing arts and things like that. Because of course that's yeah. art. Art, yes. It's still art and mm -hmm. um, traditionally we wanted to make sure that it, it aligned with traditional arts and mm -hmm. it wasn't actually accidentally excluding mm -hmm. <laughs> traditional arts, mm -hmm. especially in, in mm -hmm. an indigenous community. So I just wanted to have that that opportunity to clarify that, and, and that's maybe what you were thinking when you said that, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. for, for all of us here and for those listening in to think of arts in that broader mm -hmm. perspective. Yeah. 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 So I just wanted to be able to give that little mm -hmm. bit of clarification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So do as Mr. Chair.
Thank you. Senator Tello, you have one more question? Then we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, just, we just will real, end this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just real quick, Gillette, do you have a quorum for your, um, the board, the CAHA board? Do you yeah. have enough people to make quorum? Yeah, we have, yes. Yeah, yes. Everybody's yes. all set? Okay. Yeah, yes, we have, uh, I think we have two new, I mean, two nominees that are waiting okay. confirmation. Thank you. And then we'll have a full board. Uh, two nominees? For the board. Okay, so you don't have enough for quorum right now. You just uh, have... Oh, not we have enough for a quorum. Yeah, we have enough for a quorum okay, now. Okay, good. Okay, thank but you. But when we get those two, we'll be, uh, it'll be a full board. Full and board. I think it's going to be the first time in a long time. Okay, thank you so much, because they, right. they're going to be helpful. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. The committee will conclude the budget hearing with the Council on Arts and Humanities. Mm -hmm. um, we will continue to receive testimonies. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on General Government Operations Appropriation Housing and submit it via email to Senator Joe S. at gmail.com. See Zeus Mossy for your attendance and participating in today's hearing. And for those at home, thank you for watching. This budget hearing on Bill 282-35 LS relative to the Council on the Arts and Humanities now adjourned at shows there, it's probably 255. And we will take a 15 minute break in between because we have another hearing next, but we need to let the system, the videos uh, reset. Thank you. Have a nice day.